Hello and welcome to Scientific Supplement Reviews. In today's video, I will review LAD phototherapy. This is a cosmetic treatment which promises to reverse the visible signs of aging, such as wrinkles and sun damage, by exposing the skin to monochromatic light from an LED mask or other device. As we get older, we all dream of smooth, naturally youthful looking skin. However, these LED masks are not cheap and we want to be sure they actually work and are safe to use before we make that investment. Note that phototherapy has been tested in a number of different medical and cosmetic contexts, including skin infections, wound healing and acne, using both blue and red light. However, in today's video I will solely focus on the use of red LED generated light for the purpose of rejuvenating the skin. So let's get to it. Let's start with some background and look first at how LAD phototherapy came about. In terms of nomenclature, we should note that there are different terms being used to describe the use of LED-generated monochromatic light to treat the skin. In the course of this video, I will preferentially refer to it as LAD phototherapy, since LAD light is used in all home use devices. However, various other terms are used in the scientific literature, such as photobiomodulation and low-level laser therapy. The potential clinical usefulness of weak laser light on skin became apparent in the late 60s, early 70s, when Hungarian scientist Endre Mester found that red laser light exposure on mouse and rat skin resulted in improved hair growth and faster wound healing. Since then, the observation that LED light is seemingly just as effective as laser light has resulted in phototherapy becoming a popular cosmetic dermatological intervention, with reports of reduced wrinkles and reversal of sun damage, amongst other claims. The exact mechanism by which light exposure to the skin may alter its appearance and texture is not established, but experiments suggest that certain light-sensitive proteins of the cell's mitochondria may play a role in regulating collagen synthesis and preventing a cellular aging phenomenon called senescence. Having covered some of the theory, let's move straight on to human experiments of LAD phototherapy to see if the intervention is effective in reducing the visible signs of aging. The first thing I noticed when conducting a search of the scientific literature for clinical studies on this topic is the fact that the field is littered with a large number of low-quality studies which are usually funded by skin clinics or the companies that produce these LAD devices and where the authors often stand to gain financially, in one way or another, from those companies. The challenge then lies in trying to identify those studies that are conducted to a high scientific standard and with minimal conflict of interest. One scientific publication that seems to meet this standard to an adequate degree is this clinical study from 2007, where the authors used a randomized placebo-controlled double-blinded study design, the gold standard trial format in the field of clinical studies. The authors of this study set out to investigate whether LED light is effective in reducing the appearance of wrinkles and other signs of aging in the faces of middle-aged women. Specifically, they test two wavelengths of LED-generated light, namely red light at 633 nanometers and near-infrared light at 830 nanometers. Both of these settings are commonly used in commercially available LED masks. In total, the study coordinators split the test subjects into four trial groups who were all treated for 20 minutes twice weekly for a total of four weeks. Group number one was treated with the 830 nanometer light. Group two was treated with the 633 nanometer light. Group three was treated with both types of light in an alternating fashion. And group four was the control group which received light with no therapeutic effect, a so-called sham or placebo treatment. As an additional control measure, all subjects were only exposed to their respective light source on the right side of their face, thus allowing post-treatment comparison between the two sides of the face within the same patient. Now let's look at the study's results. First, the authors measured and quantified each participant's wrinkles on the light-exposed side of the face at regular intervals throughout the four-week test period and beyond, and then compared the results between the four groups. 
Encouragingly, the authors report that amount of wrinkles had decreased after the four-week study period and even continued to do so post-treatment in groups 1 to 3, which are the test groups. Amount of wrinkles stayed roughly the same in group 4, which was the control group. It is however noteworthy that a graph such as this one would not pass peer review nowadays in any reputable scientific journal for several reasons. Firstly, the y-axis does not extend down to zero, but is capped here at 50%. This is a deliberate sleight of hand, if you will, to make the overall drop of the lines for the test groups look more dramatic, and the relative difference to the control group look more pronounced. Secondly and most importantly, there are no error bars displayed on the data points, which is an important way of visually determining whether a result may be statistically significant or not. That being said, the authors have run statistics on this data and report a significant result in the text of the article, meaning that we can consider this a real result. Next, the authors of this study compared the right side of the face, which was exposed to the therapeutic LED light, to the left, unexposed side for each patient. They report that for group 1 to 3, the test groups, there is a significant decrease in amount of wrinkles over a 12-week follow-up period when comparing the treated side, the continuous line, to the unexposed side of the face, the dotted line. As one would expect, for group 4, whose members were exposed to an ineffective placebo light, there is no difference between the exposed and unexposed side of the face. So, in conclusion, the results from this one study are indeed very encouraging suggesting that LED phototherapy may help reduce the visible signs of aging of the skin. However, that is only one study with a handful of participants, and it alone does not convince me that an expensive LED mask is a sound investment. It thus makes sense to have a look at a meta-study, such as this one, published recently, which pulls together the results of many individual studies. This is a comprehensive meta-analysis which looks at several skin conditions and their response to LED phototherapy, and I will focus again on the results for skin rejuvenation only. This meta-analysis included six clinical studies of red LED light for wrinkle reduction in their analysis. As you can see from the forest plot on the right, all of the included studies found a statistically significant reduction in wrinkles, leading to a highly significant overall p-value. While this looks very convincing on the face of it, we must keep in mind that at least a subgroup of the studies included in this meta-analysis will include studies of poor quality and with significant conflicts of interest, as I mentioned earlier. Nonetheless, an encouraging finding for anyone thinking about face rejuvenation using LED phototherapy. So far so good. One last matter we need to settle is that of safety one may justifiably be concerned that persistent illumination of the skin harbors some potential cancer risks. Deductively, so based on our knowledge of how light radiation acts on DNA, we would come to the conclusion that red light exposure should be safe. Red light is at the lowest frequency and thus the least damaging end of the visible electromagnetic spectrum, putting it the furthest away from the potentially damaging ultraviolet end of the visible spectrum. Nonetheless, it is important to have safety studies on hand to ensure that the theory translates into practice. Fortunately, safety studies of LED phototherapy have been conducted and are summarized in this recent systematic review. A large number of studies were included in this rather comprehensive review of the field and the authors conclude that LED phototherapy is safe in the sense that there is currently no evidence to suggest that it may pose a cancer risk. So, to summarize, while there are concerns about the quality of the scientific literature on LED phototherapy as a whole, including issues of conflict of interest, I am nonetheless cautiously optimistic that LED phototherapy has some effectiveness in reducing the physical signs of aging. But as always, it is important to manage expectations. And so, while it seems to be the case that a measurable effect of wrinkle reduction can be achieved, it is unlikely that the results will be dramatic. Nonetheless, when it comes to our traffic light classification system of intervention efficacy, I will award LED phototherapy a cautious green light. <laughs> Meaning that if you are content with the potential of some subtle improvements to your visage, willing to stomach a rather hefty price tag, 
and don't mind looking like you're about to go on a psychopathic killing spree, then this technology may be for you. So, there you have it. I hope you have enjoyed this scientific supplement review of LED phototherapy, and I hope it will help you make an informed choice when deciding as to whether you want to purchase and use LED masks in the future. Please like and subscribe, follow me on Blue Sky, and let me know in the comments about any other supplements you would like me to review.